Well, hello and welcome to the very first Conversations with Artists presentation for Creative Journeys. I thought that a good thing to do in this very beginning time is to interview me so that you can all get to know a little bit more about me as the host of Creative Journeys. And I have my husband, Joe, here with me today. He is going to interview me so that it doesn't have to be just me talking at you the whole time. And I think you'll be nice to me, won't you? I don't know yet. Well, please, yeah, please yeah, do. Probably. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, take it away, Joe. <laughs> well, I think it would be nice to start kind of at the beginning or near the beginning. And um, I'm curious about the kind of home you came from. I mean, you know, where'd you come from? What was it like? I came from a really wonderful family of seven kids, wonderful parents, and we lived in a suburban area, uh, Bayside, which is just north of Milwaukee, along the uh, Long Lake, Michigan. And in my family, we spent most of our time outdoors. And my favorite thing to do was to go down into the ravines that led down to the shore of Lake Michigan and play in the forests and have adventures and just, you know, have a wonderful time. It was a, a time of being able to get lost and, and, and at the same time, lost in a good way, um, at, but at the same time um, to open up to, to strengths that, that I developed as a result of that kind of independent adventuring. Well, how old were you when you were doing this stuff? <laughs> Pretty little. I think <laughs> I was like five and six years old. That's amazing. It is. I know in this day and age, my parents would have been in trouble. But um, that that kind of um, freedom to explore and find my own way really led to developing a sense of, of self-confidence um, in my life. And so we, did you do, what did you do around the house? Did you do creative things or what was it like there? What was the, the atmosphere in your parents' home? It was very creative. My mother was a very creative woman. She uh, was a wonderful seamstress and she taught me to sew, which led to a career later on, which I'll talk about um, as, as a, an apparel designer. And um, she also did a lot of DIY type projects around the house and she just was always busy. And she encouraged all of us kids to stay creative. We always had mounds of art supplies available. Um, I believe it was a part of her way of keeping us out of her hair. I don't blame her, seven kids, good heavens. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, at what point in your life did you start thinking of yourself as an artist? Well, um, I started really becoming interested in art beyond the kinds of, of um, more simple projects that I, that I did on my own as, as a young person. When I was in high school, in my junior year in high school, I had a wonderful art teacher. Her name was Miss Pereno, and she, I now know her as Mary Gear. I know her through the um, Cedarburg Artists Guild and the, the artists in the area. And so I've been able to tell her and thank her for wow, what she okay. gave to me. Um, she taught me to really see what I was trying to interpret through my art um, and, and have that communicate to my hands rather than thinking it up in my head of, oh, this is what uh, a flower looks like, or this is what an oh, animal okay. looks like. Okay. She taught me to really see and, and have that communicate into my artwork. Okay. And so that's the time when you decided, yeah, basically mm -hmm. what path you were going to take in life. Because I know you, you had other things going on right then. You were just um, connected to your guitar, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I played the guitar um, nonstop. It was uh, like, like an appendage of my body um, from the time I was about 12 all the way through into my 20s. I just loved it and I sang and um, it, was, it was a real part of, of my life. Um, and I considered music 
uh, once they decided to get um, mm -hmm. go on um, outside of high school. Um, so I was deciding between art and music at the time when I graduated and went to UWM. Uh, I decided on art um, after taking a few music courses and also along with the art courses that I just, you know, really was loving more than anything. Okay. And so you, you went to UWM, you said. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? Well, when I started out right out of high school, it, it wasn't the best experience. Um, it, it was a time in, in, you know, art history perspective where um, art was really going through major changes and the whole I, idea of conceptual art was really the main flavor of the day. And, and the way that art was being taught at UWM at that time just did not resonate with me. And so I didn't stay with it at the time. Mm, okay. I, I left after a couple semesters and I did go back later, but uh, at that time it wasn't, it wasn't right for me. Okay, you said you went back later. Mm -hmm. Yes. How much later? Um, quite a long time later. <laughs> <laughs> There's been too many years. I keep thinking of these different slices of time in my life and it's like, oh my gosh, 10 years, 20 years, good heavens. I, I went back to school um, about 10 years later uh, after spending time in the medical field. And I was there for, for about 10 years. Then I went through a divorce mm -hmm. and decided that I was, it was time to decide what I wanted to do with the rest okay. of my life, what okay. I really wanted to do. So that's when I went back to school okay. and um, ended up getting my degree from UWM. Um, I, I started out in architecture hmm. because I thought that was going to be a good lucrative career. Um, and being a single mother, I thought, well, I need to okay. take okay. care of that. Well, <clears throat> along with the architecture courses, um, there's, there were a lot of foundation art classes that, that needed to be taken. And I found that I was just in love with the art classes hmm. okay. and that I wasn't resonating with the architecture. And, you know, I know now that I'm simply just not a three-dimensional thinker okay. in, in terms of, you mm -hmm. know, creating things. And so um, that, you know, the, the foundation courses in art, the, you know, uh, 2D design, um, the drawing, the kinds of things that you take, you know, right in the beginning, it was, they were just really exciting to me. And, and I was getting so much out of them that I decided to switch into fine art. Okay, okay. And so was your, were you mainly painting then or what kind of things were you doing? At that time when I, when I was in school, it was drawing and painting. Okay. Uh, that was my main focus uh, in my degree. And then I also uh, spent some, some time with fiber arts at the, toward the end huh. of my years there. Okay. Well, that, well, that's kind of interesting. What did you, what about the fiber arts attracted you? The course, I took a course that was um, an elective course. I just, I needed an extra elective oh, in art to, okay. to round out my, my so semester. So it was a filler thing. You it just, was. Just stuck it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I fell into it just by happenstance. And, and so, um, a big section of this particular course had to do with fabric surface design, which mm -hmm. is dyeing of fabrics and texturing and, and um, all different ways of designing fabrics. Okay. And it was just, it was so exciting to me and I just fell in love with it. I actually, that was, um, it was either my last semester or second last semester, you know, before I graduated and I was thinking, oh my gosh, why didn't I do this? <laughs> Um, but uh, in the end, I'm glad that I that that I had the background in painting and drawing because that's also been you know such a wonderful part well, of my about, life. What about that? Uh, what attracted you in fabric surface design? What do you think was the hook that, that really grabbed you? It was the color, and that's the same thing with painting. I, okay. You know, I I am just um, I'm enamored with color, and I and I I see I see color and in ways that I think a lot of people don't. And, and it has you know, certain 
meanings to me, which I really can't express. So don't ask me okay. to explain no, those. Really... But there's some deep, deep resonances inside myself about color. And, okay. and with the fabric surface design, um, I was most interested and still am most interested in the shibori Japanese shibori dyeing techniques. Okay. And those are done in a way where um, the color is layered and then sometimes you pull color out sometimes and then you layer more color on. And by the time you finish a fabric, it's a bound resist technique. So by the time you finish a fabric, this, this beautiful piece of fabric is tied up into you know just this teeny hmm. little thing. And you, have, you can't see, you don't know anything of what it's okay. gonna look like. So you finish it and open it out and you only can still only really see some of the color. And then as it dries, it just comes to life. And, it, wow. and it's just so, it, it, it's wonderful. <laughs> well, what did you do with the fabric? Okay, you're dyeing fabric, you love the color. This is what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. then, then what? Well, I I was just dying fabric and dying fabric and dying fabric and I was <laughs> hanging all over my studio and I was having a wonderful time and just, you know, having this euphoria over color. And um, people started seeing my fabrics okay. like coming through the studio. I shared this this studio space with, with other artists and and so people wanted to buy my fabrics and and then they wanted me to make something out of them. Um, and and I thought, well, okay. Um, I don't know. Did I mention how my mom teaching me to sew? I think you I just forgot to mention on it. that. No, yeah, you just touched on it, but you know, okay. kind of jumped over it. Well, my mom taught me to sew when I was very young, and she taught me very well. Okay. And um, and so you know, here I have this background in in sewing, and so I understand the construction of of a garment, and and so I started designing oh. apparel, you know, with my fabrics, and before I knew it without having planned ahead for it, um, I had a business in, in wearable art. And um, that lasted for almost 25 years. Wow, okay. And I also painted along uh, during that time, but I wasn't focusing on, on my painting um, as a business or you know, as something to market. Sure, sure. Well, were the garments more marketable? Was that a, a, a better path to make a living? Because I know that you had mm -hmm. responsibilities at that time, being a single mother. Mm -hmm. um, yes, they're very, we're, we're very marketable. Um, and more than that, my choice had more to do with the fact that I could see these garments as products. And so I could, I could make them and sell them and you know, and think of it in a more business-like fashion. Okay. Whereas the painting, um, my paintings come from a, a different place in me, you know, a deeper place. And um, I couldn't, I, I still can't, but I couldn't push them in, in terms of earning a living. Okay. And so okay. um, I, I didn't want to, to ruin that special relationship that I had with paintings by trying to push them and, and, okay. and have them be my living. Well, the thing about the, the garments was that they, they were beautiful and people loved them, but you had really a loyal clientele. And I think that the garments meant something more to them. Could you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, Women have so much difficulty with body image and in not just body image, then that body image um, goes deep into their whole sense of self image. And so the garments that I design were, were items of clothing that, that women could wear and feel good about their body in, okay. regardless of body type. Um, and, and I saw so many women just sort of brighten up and come to life when they would look in the mirror. I've had a, you know, a few women break down into tears mm. when they would see themselves in my clothing saying, oh my God, I, I have never seen myself look like this mm. in, 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 uh, in clothes. And, um, and so I began to realize what this meant in their lives. And, you know, and it, for me too, I know what it's like, you know, when I, 
when I have something on where I really feel good in it, okay. you know, my whole demeanor changes. And, um, and so I started realizing that this is a way of healing for women. And I called it healing from the outside in. Okay. And so uh, it's having a garment to wear on, on your body that helps you to feel good about mm -hmm. yourself and to step out into the world with self-confidence and how much that can do to heal, you know, going deeper um, inside and heal some of the other issues that we mm -hmm. face as women. Well, it seems that uh, the kind of rapport you had with your, with your customers and the kind of service you offered wasn't, was a lot more personal than simply making good looking products, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it seems to me to be a parallel to the connection you make as a teacher. You know, it, it's, it, it seems that it's really related in some way because I see that as a major flavor in you, your desire mm -hmm. to connect with people and to be useful to them. Yes, yes, I do have a strong desire for, for that. And, um, and my teaching is, is definitely based on that. And I, I am passionate about sharing the joy of creativity with others. And um, I, have a, I, I have a supportive, nurturing way of teaching that, okay. that allows my students to feel safe and comfortable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. opening up and trying new things. And, and I see this then reflected, you know, outside my teaching, you know, in, in their lives. And I know, you know, you've, you've done face-to-face -face teaching whenever possible in your studio and in other places and, you know, other institutions. So you've really got quite a bit experience of experience there. And really, I can see the direct extension of that whole idea into creative journeys, mm -hmm. you know, that creative journeys in a way being a way to have a bigger room to meet more people yes instead mm -hmm. of this tiny little studio we're sitting in right yes. now which is great mm -hmm. but it's little yeah <laughs> it is i i can fit a maximum of five students in here and that's kind of cutting it close with five um yeah uh creative journeys uh in the online teaching that i'm that i'm doing through creative journeys and then just reaching out as as a an artist's community, a network, um, is, is a way to, to reach any number of, of people in, in any part of the world. And to bring, bring us all together in community um, in a supportive environment that's, that's safe to share, share work and, and show your vulnerability as an artist. Okay, okay. To really be people together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and so that's just getting started. It is, yes. There's just a, a, a very small group of members. Um, we just had two new members join today, by the wow. way. Okay. And so great. every member that joins is like, <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's great. Uh -huh. um, and so it's going to it 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 will it will grow exponentially with really pretty much every every new member that joins. Sure. And as sure. people contribute and engage with with the site and you know share their work make comments on other people's works um uh participate in events like like this you know watching okay. an event like this mm -hmm. and and um you know so it's it's just beginning and, and i really see it as something that can can grow um you know beyond bounds frankly yeah and it can grow in unpredictable ways because it all has to do with who who's there mm -hmm. Yeah. So it isn't just about about you, although uh -huh. you know, that's okay. But yeah, no, I'd ra I would rather not have it be all about me. <laughs> okay. But lately, you know, just getting it started, it's a little too much about me. And pretty soon I'm hoping that it's gonna be about a lot of other okay. people. Well, I hope that people have had a chance to see you through our little chat here. And yeah. you know, as an intro and, and that it encourages them to jump in because hey, the water's fine. <laughs> it is yes uh-huh and um after this um i am going to uh, attach a, a little um video of, of a walkthrough in my studio so you can see where i work and and some of the mess that i make so thank you so much for 
for coming today. And um, I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time with all of you um, over the years. And thanks, Joe, for, for doing this for me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Welcome to my studio. It's in the historic section of Thienesville, Wisconsin, a small little town about 15 miles north of Milwaukee. When you enter my studio, you'll hear some wind chimes. I have them set up so that they get brushed against every time someone walks in the space to signify that you're entering a sacred space of creativity. This front area of the studio serves triple duty as a teaching area, a display space for some of my paintings, and also for times when I'm working in water-based media. The light in here is beautiful. It's an east-facing window with also a north-facing window. Here we've em entered the back room of the studio where I do my oil and cold wax painting. I have my paints separated loosely between colors in bins so that I can find them since I can't really read the names of the paints, but they're so messy. I have works in progress and demo panels um, in racks and scattered all over the place and more miscellaneous type supplies, including rust washes and fixatives to be used with mixed media. This tabaret is um, actually a microwave cart that, that Joe made a larger tabletop for me. It's wonderful to have things on wheels and be able to move them around, especially working in a small space like this. So a handy tip is to store your leftover paint still on the pa palette covered with a carryout container and a piece of cotton with some clove oil on it. The clove oil keeps the oil and cold wax paint workable for weeks. I cover my surfaces with freezer paper to act as a protector for the surface as well as to use as a palette for mixing my paints. A few mixed media products to be used with oil and cold wax painting. I paint on a wall with a custom designed support system that Joe and I designed together and he built. The horizontal boards are spaced in such a way that any size panel can be placed on it and supported both top and bottom creating stability regardless of where I'm painting on the panel. The bolts that, that the panels hang on can be moved side to side um, in six inch increments, creating more versatility again for hanging any size panel. Here's another wonderful tool that Joe designed and built for mounting my cameras for when I'm doing demo videos. The camera can be moved side to side on this horizontal bar and this angled bar moves up and down and provides the possibility of filming much closer. So that's it. That's all I have to show you. And I hope you enjoyed seeing my studio.